Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HGTV Test here. As you may or may not have noticed, I am no longer in Las Vegas, but I did attend Samsung's TV Innovation Backroom event at CES. Now, the South Korean brand didn't really show any of its 2019 TV lineup at the show. Instead, it used CES as more of a technological showcase to demonstrate its innovations in micro LED and also 8K display technologies. But at the backroom event, I think we did see the company's 2019 flagship UHD television, which is going to be the successor to the Q9FN. Unfortunately, no one was actually allowed to take any photos or videos in the backroom. So I would have to draw out a sketch sort of like what happens in a courtroom proceeding where no photo or no video can be allowed. So I'm just going to try and illustrate what I actually saw in the back room. Now just a word of warning, I'm no Banksy, but at least hopefully with my drawing I can illustrate what I saw. So let's start off with the layout of the back room. So if you can pay attention to what I'm actually drawing here. So as we enter the room, the door is around here. And then there are quite a few stations. So I'll start off with the station from the right of the room. So at the first station here, we are actually being shown the South Korean brand's innovations in AI upscaling. So the first station is AI upscaling. And then during the next station, the company showed off its handling of streaming content from YouTube. So let's call it like YouTube streaming. And in the third station, this is probably the most interesting station. This is the third station where the company compared its 2019 flagship QLED UHD version against competitors from other brands. So we'll just, just put a three here. And then at the fourth station, the company showed off their smooth gradation kind of a technology. So let's just put like smooth gradation or contouring removal filter here. And then at this session, it is to do with their Alexa and also maybe Google Assistant integration. Again, my memory is a bit hazy. I'm still very jet lagged. And unfortunately in the back room, I didn't really take many notes. So all these are reconstructed from memory. And then the next station is to do with the PC integration or PC casting. Basically you can actually connect your PC and display it on your Samsung UHD television, sort of like a monitor. And I think there is a Knox kind of a security there as well. And then the next station is the gaming station where Samsung showed off some impact figures and also some improvements they have made to their game mode for the 2019 flagship QLED. And the last station is here. I think it is something to do with dynamic HDR technology. So let's call it like HDR 10 plus. Okay, so let's talk a bit about AI upscaling. Again, I think the Samsung 2019 flagship UHD television will inherit some of the AI upscaling processing from the 8K Q900R, which was launched at IFA last year. And we were shown a few footage to my eyes. The sharpening is a bit artificial and a bit overdone, so it looks slightly unnatural to my eyes, but maybe it's because there is some edge enhancement going on as well. So maybe if I ever get a review unit in, I will have to turn off any sharpening or edge enhancement and see what's the native scaling capabilities of the TV is like. So that's AI upscaling. And then the company also stressed that it is placing a lot of importance on how its televisions is actually handling streaming content because more and more people are actually watching Netflix, watching YouTube and things like that. So at this station, the YouTube streaming station, the company actually showed its flagship UHD television in a up and down configuration against a OLED television here and the 
Samsung TV actually exhibited less polarization than the OLED and certainly that is true but I think the noise removal and also the decontouring can be overdone a bit so it looked a bit more like a watercolor painting with a lack of texture but again we don't know what settings are used on both displays but what I'm going to do now is to talk about the third workstation because this is by far the most interesting workstation in my opinion and here we have four displays so the first display is the Samsung let's call it Samsung 2019 flagship UHD oh come on I mean I can't believe this the only time I use this marker pen I run out of ink so I'm just gonna get this one so this is the UHD version right and hopefully you can still see from the camera so the first one is the Samsung 2019 flagship QLED and while I'm here I might as well just try and illustrate the design to you so the design is sort of like uh, if I actually draw it here so again I'm no Picasso so the stand is a central stand and then it curves outwards like this so there is space for you to actually slot any soundbar between the panel and also the pedestal stand so it actually curves and the footprint is fairly small so you will have no problem putting it on a narrow AV rack so that is Samsung's 2019 flagship UHD television they didn't really bother covering up the TV in fact they didn't actually even bother covering up the Samsung Q9FN as well so beside it there is the Samsung Q9FN all these displays are 65 inch versions I think so Samsung Kina FN and then what we'll do is I will just draw out the feet so this is the US version so the feet is basically a rectangular open stand and then below it now this is a display that is being hidden as in they actually built a mask around the bezel and the stand to try and hide it but from its local dimming behavior and how you actually handle black bars and also from the size of the masking I deduced that this is very likely to be a Sony ZF9 and also one giveaway is the viewing angle from a VA panel so I would say that this is the Sony Z9F because I was in America wasn't I so this is the Sony Z9F and one interesting thing is that obviously they took care to mask the the feet but the masking looked fairly narrow so I wondered whether the engineers or Samsung's people actually inverted the feet to make it go inwards so that it actually take up less footprint but that's just my guess uh, so don't take my word for it but I'm almost 100% certain that this is the Sony Z9F or the F9 and then directly below this TV I believe it is the E8 because again the masking actually tries to hide the soundbar below the E8 and also the stand is uh, something like this uh, in terms of the masking so my guess is that this is the 65 inch LG E8 OLED television so we have four displays here and the most obvious improvement in picture quality of the Samsung 2019 flagship UHD television versus let's say the QNA FN is in terms of the viewing angles and again here I'm going to attempt to draw out a diagram of how Samsung actually achieved that there is actually physically a diagram in the room itself but again we were not actually allowed to take any photos or any videos so I have to actually reconstruct the entire thing from memory so from what Samsung is actually saying they showed us a traditional LED LCD structure or maybe the QLED LCD structure so the traditional structure is going to be uh, you have a backlight here and then there will be let's say a TFT plane or LCD plane here and then on top you have probably color filter and then maybe a front glass substrate so according to Samsung they have implemented two 
innovations to try and reduce the loss of colors and contrast at two levels. So they have added an additional prism layer here to try and reduce the light leakage from the backlight so that it actually concentrates the beam even more to the liquid crystal layer so that there is less blooming and less side effects that comes from light leakage. And then they have also added another front coating at the front glass to try and basically again minimize light leakage. So they say that the reason you see a desaturation of axis from the point of view of LED LCD, especially VA type LED LCD, is because of light leakage. So when you look from the sides, the the strength of the light path is being dispersed and not as concentrated. That's why you see a desaturation in contrast and colors. But what they have actually done is to apply a coating, very, very small coating that acts like probably little light lenses to redirect the light back to the front or to whatever direction. So lots of probably complex calculations going on. So they are redirecting the light through this outer surface coating on the front glass so that you get less viewing angle degradation. And the result is extremely impressive. Certainly when I saw it in the back room, they showed a clip of Deadpool with his red suit. And even from extreme angles, the Samsung 2019 flagship UHD television actually matched the LG E8 OLED television in terms of the viewing angle. So I would say that from the viewing angle side of things, I think these two are probably roughly equal. And then next comes the Sony Z9F. And then the last was the Samsung Q9FN. So the improvement was very, very impressive. Unlike the Sony Z9F where because of the XY angle technology that the Japanese brand has implemented on the TV, the black level looks shallower. So from that point of view, there is no such phenomenon, no such side effect on the Samsung 2019 flagship UHD TV at all. And the black bars on the Sony Z9F look substantially grayer. And that's why I actually probably know that it is the Sony Z9F. Hopefully I'm right again, you know, even if I'm wrong, no one would know anyway, because <laughs> no one is supposed to know what the TV actually is. But yes, viewing angle is actually impressive. Now, let's be honest here, this is not the first time we've seen Samsung trying to demonstrate the improvement in viewing angle on its flagship UHD television. I remember back in 2017, the company made some improvements to the viewing angle through subpixel rendering at CES 2017 on the then what is called the Q9. It is H lit with only 32 zones, but at the back room and also at CES, people were really impressed by the viewing angles. But eventually, when the consumer version actually hit the market, we found out that Samsung has decided to can the subpixel rendering, and so the viewing angle is just similar to a VA LED LCD. So I really do hope that Samsung will realize this improvement in viewing angle on consumer sets. And they have promised us in the back room that this is indeed the version that will hit the streets. On this station, Samsung also took the opportunity to demonstrate the improvement in local dimming that they have actually put on this television. So one of the weaknesses of the Samsung Q9FN was that its local dimming can be a bit aggressive, causing shadow detail to be crushed. But the company displayed a clip of Harry Potter when Voldemort's army is amassing up a hill. And compared with all the other TVs, the shadow detail looked as clear as the Sony Z9F. And I think the LG E8 showed some crushing, but again, we don't really know what settings were used on all four sets. And we don't have any control over the demonstration. But certainly from the shadow detail point of view, the Samsung 2019 flagship VHD TV matched the Sony Z9F with a deeper black level as well. Another thing that caught my attention during this demonstration is that the engineers were pretty upfront about the number of local dimming zones on the Samsung 2019 flagship UHD television. They said that 
the panel and the number of local dimming zones are exactly the same as the Samsung Kina FN. So to me, that just means that it will have 480 independently dimmable local dimming zones. And then peak brightness should be around what 1600 to 1700 nits. Even though the local dimming zone and also the peak brightness is meant to be similar, we saw some improvement in terms of the HDR presentation. And this is because I think for the first time ever, Samsung is actually implementing dynamic tone mapping or adaptive tone mapping on their television. And when we saw a bright clip, this TV here managed to retain the specular highlight detail. Sony Z9F is actually the one that threw away the most detail in that very, very bright clip. And the Samsung Q9FN actually retained the speckle highlight detail, but the whole APL is lowered as a direct result, so it looks slightly dimmer than the Samsung 2019 flagship UHD television. And therefore, the dynamic tone mapping may be an improvement of Samsung's 2019 flagship UHD television versus the Q9FN. And they said that they will be analyzing it on a scene by scene basis. So to me, that just means uh, dynamic tool mapping technology. So this is the station, the comparison station. And on that note, I want to say that at our 2019 TV shootout, I'm seriously thinking about doing a blinded testing in that I would like to mask the bezel and the brands of all those televisions that are competing in the shootout. So if you have any idea of how to do it properly, how to mask it so that no one will know what TV is being shown, feel free to leave a comment in the YouTube section below. So I really would appreciate your suggestions. So that is this station. And then what else is there again? Let me just go back to my notes and check. So this is probably the most interesting station. And then here, they demonstrated the decontouring filter versus an LG OLED and naturally it looked smoother. And then the next station is the Alexa and Google Assistant station. So there's some demonstrations there. And then with the PC integration, you can just use a wireless network to cast your laptop or your PC to do work on the TV using it as a monitor, so to speak, without any risk of burning. And the gaming station is fairly interesting as well because they actually had a Leo Botna tester there. It is only the 1080p version, not the 4K version, but they had a version 2 of Leo Botna tester there and they demonstrated the input lag on the Samsung 2019 flagship UHD TV versus another OLED TV that was masked and the input light of the OLED TV was 48 milliseconds in 1080p. So to me, and based on the shape of how the masking was done, I deduced that this was actually a Sony A8F. The Samsung was extremely impressive. They have managed to lower the input light down to around 13.5 milliseconds. Another improvement on the gaming front is that the company has now implemented a new feature called Dynamic Black Equalizer that basically Dynamic Black Equalizer Dynamic Black Equalizer feature, let's say if you are playing a dark game or playing an first-person shooter in dark areas, you can brighten it up so that you can see your enemy or see through the shadows, giving you an advantage. So that is the gaming section. And the last section is HDR10+, and on the HDR10 Plus front, obviously the 2018 Q9FN also plays HDR10 Plus content, but on the Q9FN, and in fact all 2018 Samsung QLED televisions, there is no indication that you're actually playing HDR10+. Now that has been modified for 2019 because on the screen itself, let's say if you play HDR10+, content through a UHD player, and then if you press the info button on the remote control, you can actually see that usually there's an info bar and usually it says like HDR, UHD with like the resolution, and frame rate and things like that. So on the Q9FN, it will only display HDR normally, but on the 2019 Samsung flagship QHD QLED, it will be displaying HDR10+, plus, giving you a clear indication that it is actually accepting and displaying HDR10+, plus content 
also they demonstrated how to tell that the Amazon Prime content that you are actually watching is in HDR10+. Plus. So when you press the info button on the remote control when you are displaying an Amazon Prime content which is supposed to be playing HDR10+, Plus, there won't be this info bar because of the Amazon app. But if you actually go through the settings and you press on the settings button, then up here, let's say whatever mode that you are actually seeing, movie mode or whatever, there will be a clear indication that it is actually in HDR10+. Plus. So this is another way for you to see that the content, let's say from Amazon Prime Video, is in HDR10+. Plus. And the company has no intention of adopting or embracing Dolby Vision at this moment in time. So there you go. That's basically a quick illustration. I say quick, but you know this has gone on what twenty something minutes now. So, <laughs> but hopefully this will give you some indication of the improvements to expect from Samsung's 2019 flagship QLED UHD television. And the most impressive improvement is definitely in terms of the viewing angles. If that materializes on consumer sets, and then you get a lower input lag, you get a notification of the HDR10 Plus playback. And oh yeah, another big thing is dynamic tone mapping for static metadata HDR10 content. So yes, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.